Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Benchmade Shootout. Uh, definitely their newest OTF and definitely a much more compelling design from Benchmade. I have not been the biggest fan of Benchmade's uh, automatic knives in the past. And there's a lot of good here that they have not done on um, you know previous OTFs. So uh, this is pretty cool. I will link it down below. Sometimes it's available and sometimes not. It's, it's a newer model. So I've seen it come in and out of stock a couple of times, but I'll link it down there so you guys can check it out. If you want to, as per usual, when you use my links, it does support my channel, so I'd appreciate it, but that's up to you. Thanks so much to Benchmade for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons who are supporting me. And th uh, please, <laughs> thanks to the people who follow me on Instagram as well, but please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this. So I'd call it a full-size OTF, definitely. Doesn't feel small in any way. Overall length is coming in at eight and a quarter. What about with the glass breaker? Okay, we'll measure with a glass breaker. Eight and a half inches. <laughs> Blade length, three and a half inches. Your cutting edge. Oh, the cutting edge is also three and a half inches. Wow, pretty good ratios there. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? So you can see they're about right. Yeah, it's close to the size of the Rat uh, 1. Definitely a big knife. We'll just do a couple more here. How about up against the Benchmade Bug Out? Definitely bigger than the Benchmade Bug Out. And we'll also do the Spyderco Para 3. Also definitely larger than Para 3. How about some OTF size comparisons? How about up against the Microtech? Uh, let's do the UTX85. Yeah, UTX85 down here and the Microtech Ultratech. That's probably the size comparison that is going to be the that's probably gonna be the best one. It's a little bit longer, even including the glass breaker, it's a little bit longer than the uh, Ultratech. Let's put it up against some bigger OTFs. How about up against the Microtech Combat Troodon? Mm, there you go. And up against the Microtech Scarab 2. We are at a bit of an angle here, so it might look like the Scarab 2 is massively larger than both of these knives, but it's really about the same size as the Combat Troodon. So, not quite as big as these monster boys, for sure. All right. Um, how's the action? The action's actually really good, which is nice because in the past, like the, there's actually fairly minimal blade play. I mean, versus, let's see here. I can't say it feels like it's a whole, yeah, it's not a whole lot. It's about the same as the Combat Troodon. About the same as the Ultra Tech. It feels about the same, right? The actual blade play is very minimal, and then it's pretty easy to actuate that switch, and I think it's because this part is so pronounced. Now, that can create a slight ergonomic problem depending on how you're holding it. It is nicely rounded, though, but there's a lot of leverage on this thing, right? So the action itself, the power of it, the snap, the ease of actuation, and the lockup is all really good. It's nice. It has way, it's got way less blade play than a Benchmade Infidel. I'll tell you that much. Well, my Benchmade Infidel, okay. I've heard it all. I've handled about 20 different Infidels from different time periods over the last 10 years. They all feel sloppy and loosey-goosey, right? So maybe you, <laughs> maybe I've had a bad experience, but it just, that same kind of thing I've felt with a lot of their OTFs in the past. So this one feels a little bit better and I'm, I'm really happy about that. Uh, let's do carry profile. So the thickness of the thing up against the spider. Look at that. Did you notice it comes right out of the middle? It's not over to one side. That's kind of neat. Thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. We have some slight contouring in the scales, but it's really not that much thicker. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3. Uh, yeah, it's, if you count the glass breaker, it's just a hair shorter, right? But if you're just going by the handle length, it's definitely a little bit shorter than the PM2. Uh, it's, it's definitely longer than the pair of three, including this little switch here. We do have a maximum height that is approaching the pair of three and PM2, but it's really not that big of a deal. And I'll tell you why this thing is ridiculously lightweight. Handle scales are CF elite, which is 
I guess a combination of injection mold plastic and carbon fiber. That's um, just, you know, that's my understanding of it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, supposed to be incredibly lightweight and incredibly durable. And I think there's quite a bit of information online to back that up. I have not taken this thing out and just beat the absolute crap out of it in order to, like, I mean, like, I, I've not taken this and pounded on it with a sledgehammer to be able to test the overall durability. I'm going to guess that dropping this off of a ladder onto concrete will probably not result in the thing breaking. I think that's the kind of the idea is just impact resistance and strength while you're squeezing on it. Anyways, materials. We are looking at crew wear, which is really cool. That's awesome that they decided to go with crew wear. CF Elite, and yes, it does have a steel chassis. Wow, 2.75 ounces. The balance on this thing and the ratios on it are very, very good. That's going to make a lot of people happy. Do I wish that they had it in aluminum? Yeah, I do. We'll talk more about that. It would definitely create more weight, but I kind of do wish that they had this thing in aluminum. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Um, pretty sure these are all T6, right? Oh, no, T6. There's only four of them, and it, this is an OTF, right? So at least they're not blocking us out of it. That's pretty cool. It's kind of been a thing with Benchmade. Like, they... There's a reason not to disassemble it, this uh, outside of the fact that it is an OTF. I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, they're not that complicated. Um, no, but there's another reason not to disassemble this, and we're going to get into that here in a little bit. But if you have to, if you really feel like you're, you just got to do it, right, pretty sure be, uh, that goes against Benchmade's policy, right? So that's going to be on you if you decide to do that. That is on you. But if you absolutely have to, you can do it. It's T6. There's four of them. And you'll be in there. I did it. And we're going to talk about it. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's cool. That they didn't lock us out of it. Blade stock thickness. Uh, let's see here. Come on now. I'm still going strong. Man, blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in very thin. Am I still on the flat? Eh, no. You know what? I'm sorry. I was on the... I was partially on that bevel there. Let's make sure that we are actually getting the flat there. Okay, it's still really thin. Yeah. Uh, 85 to 90 thousandths. So, there you go. Is that it? I think we can get into the meat and potatoes here. Okay, so this, maybe I'm biased, but this is the best looking Benchmade OTF for a while. The Infidel looks good other than their choice of you know, machining on the end of that fuller. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's a good looking knife, but I mean, for how this is set up, like a non-symmetrical OTF, right? Meaning like, you know, the deadlock or um, the direct delta from Microtech or the Infidel, right? Um, non-symmetrical, this is really good looking. And the blade is not so, I think there's been a problem in the past with, with a lot of, it's not just Benchmade. Like the ones that are really guilty of it are like the H and K's, right? You remember those where it's like a big old handle and it's got this little skinny little blade coming out of it. This looks pretty good. The handle shape looks good. The handle shape is actually um, pretty similar to the bug out, right? It's just kind of like a larger, it's got more curvature in here, right? Um, but it, it's similar. And you know, that, that means generic knife handle shape with generally good ergonomics. And the ergonomics are good. If you're behind that switch, they made that right there. That just, that falls just perfectly so that when you're holding it in the standard grip, you're not pressing that thing into your hands. If you really want to choke out, it's, it's hardly worth it, right? You're just scooting up this much, right? People say, oh, that point's going to make it. It's going to dig into my hand while I'm choking up on it. You're choking up on it is you're going to get a little bit closer, but it's, I mean, even if you are, right? Even if you are, it's still not that bad. It's only going to be if you're squeeze because this is pretty heavily rounded off, right? This is not sharp at all. It's only going to affect you if you are pushing this blade through heavy material for uh, for long periods of time. But the standard grip on this guy is very good. They've also textured this in a way that is both aesthetically pleasing and it's uh, creating actual, you know, functional grip, which is nice. This area up here is exceptionally grippy, right? So if you're going to hold it like this, 
right? Or you're just bearing down on it and your index finger's getting there. Those areas are super duper grippy. I'll tell you this. This is essentially like, you know, grip tape on a skateboard. So in and out of the pocket, um, that's going to fray your pants up a bit, much more, I mean, just a little bit, right? It's not, at least it's not under the pocket clip. That would have been abysmal, but that's very, very grippy. Absolutely. So keep that in mind. But it is, you know, if you're, if you're using this, especially like in a wet environment, oh yeah, no, you're not, <laughs> you're not going to drop this thing. Absolutely not. So how does the CF Elite feel, right? You obviously are going to say a lot of nice things about it. I mean, they sent it to you for free. You're probably going to say a lot of nice things about it. The CF Elite makes it feel like a toy. <laughs> Man, I like listen. I, I appreciate that there are companies like Benchmade who will uh, will send me stuff for review. Uh, let me tell you something cool about Benchmade. They have never once told me what they do or don't want me to say. They have always been really cool in that, like, yeah, we'll provide you one for review. We want you to tell us exactly what you think. That's the that's the truth, guys. Benchmade, and there's and, and that's the case with most people, right? Some people are a little more sensitive than others, but Benchmade has always been like, hey, we're gonna send this to you. Just say exactly what you think. So I appreciate that. Here's what I think. This stuff, however tough it is, however durable it is. It makes it feel like a toy. It's the same feeling that I got with the bug out. Right? The Grivery scales make the bug out feel cheap because they are super hollowed out and thin, etc. This stuff is undoubtedly strong. Like squeezing on it, I might be able to feel a little bit of flex, but the amount of <laughs> the amount of squeeze that I can put on this thing, there's a, there's definitely a point where it just doesn't flex anymore. It's also being backed up, you know, by the, the steel on the inside, the chassis, right? But I definitely could not squeeze this so hard that I would be concerned with breaking it. And it's also not something that's going to, I mean, they obviously test this stuff, right? It's not like they're just, oh, gosh, I sure hope this YouTube knife reviewer doesn't break it with his bare hands. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I mean, during uh, normal use, right? And I mean, like, as long as you're not putting the blade in a vise and beating on the end of it with a sledgehammer, um, as long as you're using this like a knife, there's no way. This stuff is definitely strong. But, yeah, it definitely makes it feel cheap and hollow. Right now, some people will like this. Here's the benefit. Obviously, the ratio on this, the ratios on this thing are excellent. So carrying this thing, you're not going to notice it at all. I mean, you're getting the convenience of an OTF, and you're getting an awesome steel. In this case, it's CPM Crewwear, which we're going to talk about. Um, you're getting excellent ratios, and you're just th this is an incredible. A lot of people see OTFs, right? Even people who like knives, they automatically think, right? Any OTF automatic switchblade knife was designed as a weapon and that's its only function. Wrong, 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 wrong. I don't care how solidified that opinion is in your mind. This is a tool. Just because it's oh, awesome, John Wick, right? Just because that's the feeling that you get doesn't mean that that's its only function. In fact, far from that. These things function way better as utilitarian tools. In fact, I would make an argument. I have made this argument so many times. OTF knives are safer and more efficient than you know folding knives in a lot of cases. Uh, you never have to touch the blade or any part of it to get it to deploy or retract. You have to be really deliberate with the switch to get it to deploy. So people who have never handled or carried OTFs always ask me, is there a chance the thing is going to go off in your pocket? Virtually zero chance that you're, that you just bumping into stuff on a day to day basis is going to push this forward, right? You have to overcome the spring past this sort of event horizon before it actually throws the blade. It's just not a reasonable circumstance that you're going to, you know, put yourself through where something is going to hit this inside of your pocket and push it forward in a way that'll cause it to deploy the blade. And even if it does, right? Oh, it just pokes in and it does the, the I thought OTFs just fire directly through whatever you hold them up to. That's movie nonsense, right? For the most part, the single action ones are definitely more powerful, but these double action ones, right? You just sort of reset them and they're good to go. So um, there's just a lot of misconceptions about OTFs. There's just a lot of like weird mentalities associated with them. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why we have ridiculous laws around this. These things are no more dangerous, no more, you know, meant as a weapon than any other, you know, 
No more, in my opinion, no more than a rolling pin is, right? <laughs> so, um, no, it, 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 this is a super convenient tool. It's incredibly easy to manipulate. It's incredibly convenient. Just pull it out of your pocket, deploy it, make the cut, put it back, put it, put the blade away, put it back in your pocket. It's excellent, right? It does all that. Anyways, I'm kind of, um, you know, getting away from myself here, but um, the, uh, I, I think what I was <laughs> saying originally is that the, um, you know, the Grivery just feels really, really uh, cheap and that uh, people who enjoy the balance and the ratios of a super lightweight knife, I mean, really, you are getting to, to argue with on the on the side of the Grivery, not the Grivery, the CF Elite here, you are getting plenty of strength um, and plenty of utility out of an object that has a three and a half inch cutting edge, right? Um, and uh, it's going to be incredibly easy to carry, right? It's just going to have a compounding effect on that convenience and utility, right? So there you go. Um, we have a, uh, it's like a, I, I think this is a, um, like an FDE, like a flat torque earth PVD coating on the blade, um, which is great. It might, Actually, it feels a little less chalky than a PVD coat. It might be Cerakote. In any case, it's definitely going to add a bit of corrosion resistance to uh, the crew wear, which is a steel that is um, very favorable. <laughs> and like many, I mean, lots of people love crew wear. And, you know, for, for good reason. Crew wear has great edge retention. Uh, it takes a fine edge. Very tough. The only downside is that it's not stainless. Now, it's not going to be, to my understanding, is it's nowhere near like 1095 or something like that. But a coating is probably a good idea. This is just an all around good EDC steel. And I think, you know, on a knife like this, I, I think it's cool that they put it on an OTF. And I'm, I also think it's cool that we just didn't, we didn't get S30V again. It would have been fine. There's nothing wrong with S30V, but it's nice that we just didn't get that again or D2, right? They still do the, they still do the Infidel in D2. Um, but uh, I'm really glad that we got Gravity. I'm also, I'm also really digging this blade. I think it'd be cool if they just did a regular draw point version of it, but the the little, you know, kind of subtle Tanto is pretty nice. Now, CPM Crewwear has better toughness as a composition than um, steels like, uh, you know, S30V, M390, S110V, right, stuff like that. It's not the toughest steel in the world, but it is tough, right, in that sense. It's tougher than a lot of the super steels that we... I've come to know and love. This is a very thin geometry. It's definitely thin out of the tip, so it's not like, oh, it's in crew wear, so I can just go ahead and take it out and absolutely beat the crap out of it. No, this thing still has its limitations. It's not a fixed blade, right? But you do get the benefits of crew wear in, you know, when you're using this thing, if you're using it heavily. The edge is substantially, uh, uh, it's, it's much less likely to chip, much more likely to roll, which is in turn much easier to sharpen out. Like maintenance is made easier with crew wear. So it's just nice, right? If you work in or around salt water or a really wet environment, it probably won't be the best bet for you, even though it's coated. Um, but it just depends. It's circumstantial, right? I do like the blade. I do like how it looks. You definitely, given that it is a Tanto, you're going to have to, you know, deal with that over time, sharpening you know, past this angle here, you're going to be sharpening this and you're going to be sharpening here. So this little, the, where it changes angles, right? You're going to be rounding that out. Um, there's a little bit of a swedge up top. I think that looks nice. Uh, definitely, you know, doesn't need to be there, but it would otherwise look kind of plain, almost just like it was stamped out. So I kind of appreciate that it was there. There's a little tiny bit of a flat that runs maybe 40% the length of the blade. So it's fine. Um, and that's it, right? It's just a nice, clean blade. I like the look of the FDD and uh, FDE and the black together. I think that looks really good. Just says CPM Crewwear and it says Benchmade. Um, it do it does say U.S. Manufacturing or U.S. Manufacturer right there, right? So it's kind of nice that it just does say U.S. I think it still says Benchmade USA. Like if we, yeah, it still says Benchmade USA. So there you go. Um, there's a glass breaker. So, I mean, most OTFs, they just have glass breakers, right? This is a, it's kind of pointy, but it's also like, you know, it's not like this. <laughs> it's a gigantic thing. Or this. It's not like this big, gigantic, just gaudy looking thing on the end of it. No, it's pretty subtle, right? Um, we also have Benchmade's best clip outside of the bu uh, bug out clip on this knife. So that's nice. It can be mounted for left or right hand carry. 
Um, given that, uh, you know, this is not a symmetrical design, if you're going to care, if left-handed people are going to carry it, you can. The switch does not favor one side or the other, so that's nice. You just flip the clip over and you're good to go. Like I said, the action's good. It's very snappy. Uh, we have uh, extremely minimal blade play, right? Just a little tiny bit. Perfectly acceptable, right? Um, I can't touch the blade once it's retracted into the handle, so that's nice. That's really all I can check there for that. So, um... What's the downside? What's it? You mentioned some issue with disassembly. I've got two issues with this knife, and believe it or not, it's really not the price. The price isn't terrible, right? The price is okay. This is a USA OTF. I don't. I would imagine the carbon carbon fiber elite or CF elite is less expensive than aluminum, but it's probably like when we're talking about what is actually going into this knife that's making it cost as much as it does. It's not, the, the CF Elite is not the thing, right? It could probably cost a little bit less. How much does it cost? It costs 270 bucks, right? Let's get that part out of the way. That's not really the part that's bothering me, right? This feels like, it, you know, maybe about 250 would have been like, wow, that's pretty good. 270, I don't hate it. It's not incredible, I don't hate it. That's how I feel a lot of, about a lot of Benchmade knives, right? This is the part that bothers me. Um, so I immediately wanted to see on the inside I was like, I want to see what the chassis looks like. I want to take it apart. So initially it came apart like any other OTF that I've ever uh, taken apart. And I did this off camera. I was just doing it at my own time. When you, As soon as you take this off, there is a, there, there are two standalone springs. They're little teeny tiny springs. And they're holding these plates in between the scales. So the plate itself is loose and the spring is loose. There's one here or maybe it's here. And then there's one down here. As soon as I took that off, both of them, they just came. In fact, I've, the, the, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, where is it? Is it this? Yeah. And I have another one here and I, I, I couldn't get it back together. Um, now, you know, Benchmade does not recommend taking these apart, right? And I told him, I said, hey, I took it apart because I wanted to know what the heck is going on here. He said, we really don't recommend people take this knife apart. And um, yeah, I can see why. Um, I could not get this thing back together. Absolutely not. Sorry, I'm moving these other parts here. But it, this is a separate shootout. This, they, these, these four little pieces, I could not get back in there. Uh, floating, I don't like the, these types of floating parts because they're so little. These springs are so little. I dropped one of these on the floor and I could not get the thing. Uh, I, I, I could not find them, right? And even, even after I did find them, um, <laughs> I said, I, I couldn't find them at all. And then I found them. It was hard to find them. Uh, once I found them, got them back in, I could not get them to stay in place. It was impossible. If you take this thing apart, right? And this is gonna, what's gonna happen here is that people are gonna be tempted to try this themselves. They're gonna say, oh, I can do it. You know what? Don't take this apart. Don't. You will be so frustrated. Don't do it. I'm serious. It's, it, it was almost impossible. I could not get that thing back together. What, how, whatever the necessity is of these little things right here, right? And the springs, there needs to be something that, they, they are fixed in place. That's the issue that I have with this. Um, if you do not take this knife apart, you will be just fine. If something happens to it while you're using it, send it back to Benchmade. I know you're gonna be tempted, you're like, oh, I don't wanna be without my knife that long. I don't wanna, I just wanna have it. I get it. Feel that way too about a lot of stuff. If you take this thing apart, there's nothing but misery on the inside. Don't do it. It is not like an Ultratech. It's not like a Scarab, right? It's not like a, a as far as I know, it's not like, um, you know, an Infidel. Um, but uh, I can, honestly can't remember how I've been inside of one. That stunk. Uh, those pieces need to be fixed. They need to be on a hinge. The spring needs to be, if, if it has to be like this, this thing, it needs to be hinged and attached to the frame and then this spring somehow needs to be attached to the plate, right? Or attached to whatever the plate runs into. It doesn't need to be coming out of there on its own. Or there needs to be a pin, right? Better yet, just a pin on this thing because the spring goes in this little slot. There needs to be a pin on it so the spring actually goes into it. That would be better, 
right? And then a hole cut in the part that it squishes against so it goes right through. I don't know, right? But it can't be like that. That's all I'm saying. I can't, I'm not an engineer, knife designer, so it's not, you know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to make this stuff better, um, like in terms of like the internals. I'm just saying that it, people are gonna try to take this apart and you're in for it, right? The other thing, the CF Elite is fine and I understand the benefits of it. And I would imagine, you know, it's probably a little bit cheaper than aluminum, right? And it's probably gonna be stronger than anybody will ever need it to be realistically. Oh man, I just really wish this was in aluminum. I just I just want that feeling. I want that solidity, right? You you're not going to get the same solidity as you do with an Ultratech. It just feels more solid. It just feels more uh, right? Two things to make this an absolute home run. This is an awesome design, right? In its in its you buy this and you just don't you don't try to take it apart, you just take it out and use it, right? It will perform. This is a good knife. It's a good design. Outside of the internals, the floating parts and the internals. And I think most people who pick this up and handle it are going to say, mm, it feels pretty cheap because of the hollow CF Elite, right? It just does. So as it sits, I don't think $270 is a bad price. People are going to have them ask 100 people, get 100 different opinions on that, right? Versus everything else that I've seen from Benchmade, right? Especially when we consider their OTFs uh, and just general pricing with U.S. manufacturing, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really upset about that price. I don't like the floating parts, right? Uh, all those parts are solid, right? And if they, if they can come out, like there needs to be a way to, uh, that like attack, like reattach them where they sit. It's kind of like how when you put a blade back down on the the um, the pivots, right? It attaches like that. The pivot goes through and holds it there so that you can put the scale back down and screw it. It needs to be something like that. These parts are, they're like that, but how they're held in place is with these teeny tiny little, it's just, it, it's just pressure, right? And once you have this down, it's just the casing of everything holding it together and keeping it from, from coming out of place. With this thing together, as long as screws don't back out and the scales don't go like this, nothing's going to happen with the internals. Nothing. Unless you put this thing in like some, you know, like a baler or something like that, then yeah, it might destroy it. But just general use, nothing's going to happen with those internals, right? Um, fixing that and putting it in aluminum, you have an absolute home run of an OTF. This thing is so close. This thing is so close to being like one of the best OTF designs in existence. It's a nice size, got a nice blade, good blade material, right? This is so close. Action's good. No part of that is sluggish at all. It feels snappy and powerful. Haven't had it misfire once. This is good, but it could be better. I'll link, I'll link it. Guys, check it out. It's not quite where I'm like, yeah, rush out and get it, right? It's mainly those free-floating parts. That's the one thing that's going to bother me. And I know you're not supposed to, like, I'm going to tell you this. Benchmade's going to tell you this. Don't take it apart. Don't. I don't care. <laughs> I, I know. I just have to stress that because I know people are going to be like, I bet I could do it. I'm good at puzzles. Don't. Don't do it. Um, outside of that, I like this knife. So you can make the choice for yourself, uh, but that's going to be the end of this review. Uh, thanks again to Benchmade for sending this in for me to take a look at. I really appreciate that. This was really cool, and I definitely am still very excited about it. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.